Hi everyone, I'm Eric Vanderwall from Gut Well Now. I'm just going to give you a 15 second introduction of who I am. I completed my Doctor of TCM program, acupuncture and Chinese herbal medicine in Canada where I'm originally from. I also hold a master's degree in medicine and I'm a trained shiatsu therapist. Today we're going to be talking about how to choose your herbal prokinetics according to Chinese medicine. So if you've ever wondered which herb based prokinetic is best for you, we can look at some Chinese medicine facts to help you make a more informed choice. In the treatment of digestive disorders, particularly that of SIBO, small intestine bacterial overgrowth, prokinetic is almost universally recommended, and with good cause. For sufferers looking for an herb-based prokinetic, Ebrogast and Modal Pro are both usually the first stop. However, it's often hard to choose between the two different products. So this is where our Chinese medicine theory comes into play and can help us make that decision more easily. Now, this is my general disclaimer. This talk and handouts contain general information about medical information and treatments. This information is not advice and should not be treated as such. You must not rely on the information in this talk as an alternative to medical advice from your doctor or other health care providers. So if you think you're suffering from any medical condition, you should seek immediate medical attention. In Chinese medicine, also called traditional Chinese medicine or TCM, has a long history of using herbs as medicine that dates back more than 2,000 years and is still being applied as mainstream medicine throughout many places in Asia, even today. I was fortunate enough during my education as a Chinese medicine practitioner to be an intern and a resident for more than five years at a Chinese medicine and integrative medicine hospitals in China's historic southern capital city. If you look at the picture here, this is actually one of the hospitals where I spent quite a few years. It's quite large. It has uh, many, many buildings and many, many floors with many, many departments. Um, and it's there that thousands upon thousands of patients are treated using herbs every day, acupuncture as well, manual adjustments, massage therapy, along with modern lab testing, of course. These hospitals, along with untold numbers of private clinics, are the fertile daily testing ground of modern Chinese medicine, where vast numbers of patients are treated every day. And so it's through this treatment of thousands and thousands of patients that we learn the successes or failures of each Chinese medicine herb and formula as we apply them over and over again, and then slowly adjusting our methods. It's this experience-based medicine that can help us better choose which herbs to implement and how. However, first we need to understand a little bit about Chinese medicine classification of herbs. Chinese medicine herbs are classified by a variety of methods, and these methods of, methods of classification were developed over 2,000 years of experience. And thermal nature is one of the oldest and most commonly applied methods of herbal classification. Most likely this is because it's so easily observed and yet has such a significant impact. So again, we call this thermal nature. And in this method, herbs are classified from cool to cold, and neutral of course in the middle, to warm to hot. So for example, herbs that are cool are gypsum, or rhubarb root, and as well as indigo, while hot herbs are things like cinnamon, garlic, or fennel. This classification is decided based on the herb's effect on the body, not necessarily on the mouthfeel of an herb. Now, thermal nature also applies to disease, not just to herbs. So Chinese medicine categorizes diseases or disorders by thermal nature ranging from, this, ranging from the same concept of hot to cold. And more accurately, we should say that your condition, rather than your disease, has a thermal nature. This is because the same disease in one person can change from hot to cold or cold to hot, or manifest very differently in different people. This is really no surprise to anyone who suffered from a chronic illness for an extended period of time. So even though your disease may not have changed, how you react to it and how you feel with that disease does change. So thermal nature is not so much a classification of disease itself, but rather our body's reaction to its current situation, which in this case has a disease or a disorder. 
Acutely, we can see this in a type of a microcosm when examining the common cold. And I'm going to give you a little example here. Two people are suffering from the same cold, and they caught it from each other. It's in fact the same virus, or very slightly changed. However, one person may be suffering from chills, a tight neck, maybe a tight scapula, and some like mild, moist cough. While the second person, on the other hand, may be suffering from a fever, a dry nose, a dry throat, and a barky cough. According to Chinese medicine principles, the former person is suffering from cold, while the latter person is suffering from heat. Heat or cold here does not specifically refer to the internal body temperature of a person, but rather looks at the body's overall reaction to a pathogenic influence. So the first person who feels cold has a tight neck or shoulder or scapula because cold is contracting and has a very mild or moist cough. The second person has a fever, so it's heat. They have a dry nose because heat dries things out and they have a dry, barky cough. So this is heat in Chinese medicine. Now here's the key to all of this. Hot conditions are treated with cold herbs. Well, cold conditions are treated with hot herbs. As in Chinese medicine thinking, the ideal state is neutral. So balance is critical. The body should neither be suffering from extreme heat nor extreme cold, but be in a middle neutral homeostasis place. Therefore, when a patient feels cold or suffers from lassitude because cold causes stagnation and makes us feel more tired, maybe they're pale in color, etc., etc., hot herbs are used, such as ginseng or ginger. When a patient has a fever, or they're hyperactive, dry, flushed, we use cold sedating herbs, such as gypsum. While this is only one single classification of herbs, it is one of the most basic and primal methods of organizing herbs that we should not ignore. So ignoring this very fundamental concept, experience has shown us time and time again, leads to problems usually most often in the form of side effects or the progressive worsening of symptoms. Therefore, to not take this into consideration when choosing the proper herbal prokinetic is definitely a huge mistake in my opinion. Let's talk about prokinetics themselves and choosing the right herbal prokinetic now that we have a little bit of background. First, modal pro. So Modal Pro has a variety of synthetic ingredients. Our focus here is to examine on the ginger in this product, which makes up a full 1,000 milligrams. While synthetic supplements and pharmaceuticals can be classified according to thermal nature as well, it's a highly debated area as it's relatively new. Certainly there's a lot of ground here to be explored by modern TCM practitioners or integrative medicine doctors. One thing that we really should note right off the bat here is that Modal, con Modal Pro contains a second herb in a very small doses, which is a known source of 5-HTP. So 5-HTP could potentially conflict with uh, antidepressants or other serotonin influencing drugs. So go to our website www.gutwellnow.com have a look at our blog post about this and click on the link to see more about the potential conflicts here before you start taking this product. The ginger in Modal Pro is a classic definition of a hot herb. It was first listed in the Han Dynasty Classic, the Divine Farmer's Classic of Materia Medica, and has been in common medical usage ever since, and probably even before that. In fact, a later commentator Tao Hongjing, so around 500 AD, lamented ginger was so hot that it shouldn't be used as a spice on our food, but only as a medicine for the fear that it might be too strong. So if we take something that's too hot for too long, that's too strong, it's going to make a hot body condition. Ginger is traditionally used to induce diaphoresis, that means sweating for the common cold, treats nausea, poor digestion, cold type diarrhea, and it detoxifies. Uh, it only took us about 2,000 years, but us Western people also figured this out, and modern research for the most part concurs. 
Again, if you head over to our blog post, you'll see some links to research, but we've linked down to show that it is antiviral, antibacterial, can alter the digestive motility, and may help counteract liver damage due to certain sources. Now, when choosing between Ebergast and Modal Pro, we believe that Modal Pro should be the first choice as an herbal prokinetic for cold digestive disorders due to its high ginger content. Of course, this is barring any other contraindications to taking this product. So when Modal Pro is used for hot digestive disorders, we're more likely to see an increase in those hot symptoms. Again, this is not to discount the other ingredients in Modal Pro and their possible effects on the migrating motor complex and gut repair. Our next product is Ebrogast. And this is an herbal solution that contains nine different herbs that have been in use for more than 40 years and actually has a fantastic safety record. One downside to Ebrogast is that it is alcohol based. So while the amount of alcohol is very small, for some people this is really a no-go. That aside, when we look at the thermal nature of the herbs contained in Ebergast, it's overwhelmingly cool to cold. This is in fact a list of all the different herbs and the flavors according to Chinese medicine, as well as the nature. It does have two warm herbs, but not hot, which gives some counterbalance to all of the cool herbs. And this is actually a sign of a good formula that is not excessively cold or excessively hot, but has a few counterbalancing herbs. The next question we have to ask ourselves is, are personal digestive disorder hot type or cold type according to Chinese medicine? So as we remember, if we're cold type, we need hot herbs. If we're hot type, we need cold herbs. So the first important thing to note is that both diarrhea and constipation can be hot or cold type, or even mixed or neutral. So the following chart is a simplified number of signs and symptoms to estimate the thermal nature of your digestive disorder. So a trained Chinese medicine practitioner can help better assess your specific condition. That being said, these uh, few signs and symptoms can give you a general idea. So let's have a quick look. So for cold type, it's easy to feel cold and people are often putting on sweaters when others are taking it off. Hot, wet, hot water makes their stomach or other symptoms feel better. They have frequent copious or clear urination. They might vomit clear fluids. They may have a history of juicing um, as a type of diet if you're not familiar with that or an excessive cold or uncooked food consumption. So no burning sensation on defecation around the anus, dull pain in the stomach or epigastric region, undigested food parts in the stool, cold sensation in the abdomen or no desire to expose your abdomen, such as taking off your shirt or having your belly out. And they often feel better after having a bath or a hot water bottle on their stomach. This is compared to the hot type which is easy to feel warm or hot, and they're often taking off their sweaters when other people are putting theirs on. They may have a desire to drink cold water, or it could be a possible desire to drink cold water, but not actually drinking it. The urine may be scanty or dark. They may have hot or sour regurgitation of food or stomach acid. They may have a history of eating spicy food or alcohol consumption. There may be a burning sensation on or after defecation around the anus, a burning stomach or epigastric sensation of pain, offensive smelling stools, hot or restless feeling in the chest, dry mouth, dry throat, or dry nose. And lastly, a sensation of heat in the afternoon or a low grade fever. When determining your type according to Chinese medicine, there's a few important things to note. The first thing is long-term herbs should match your long-term pattern. If one consumes a large amount of hot, spicy, greasy food in one sitting, they might suffer from acute diarrhea that's a hot type and might burn on its way out. Hot in, hot out. Alternatively, if one overconsumes too much frozen or uncooked vegetables in a single sitting, they might, might also acutely suffer from diarrhea, which may be the cold type. There might be some food in it, there may be not a strong smell or any burning sensation, but it just passes through them. 
So these are examples of acute patterns. We're looking to treat the long-term pattern. So because herbal prokinetics are typically used for the long term, they should match that long term pattern. Secondly, it's important to recognize that your pattern may change over time. While you may have begun as a hot type, you may change more towards a cold type or not. This depends on multiple lifestyle factors, diet, herbs, the progression of your underlying disorder. However, if your condition begins to change, you might consider changing your herbs. Lastly, what's right for you may not be right for someone else. This is a tricky thing about recommending protocols, herbs, or other interventions to other people. Each person is unique and manifests their own personal health disorders in a different way. I know it's tempting to give advice to other people based on how you yourself felt, but it's important to listen to your own body and decide what's best for you and understand what's best for other people may not be the same thing. So all in all, here's a little summary to our talk. Both herbs and the body's reaction to health disorders can be categorized by thermal nature according to Chinese medicine theory. Hot herbs are used to treat cold disorders, while cold herbs are used to treat hot disorders. Ebergast overall is a primarily cold formula of herbs, while Modal Pro, due to its high ginger content, is primarily a hot product. All people are unique and therefore manifest health disorders in different ways. Treatment should follow this manifestation. A tri trained Chinese medicine practitioner professional can help you choose the correct herbs for your condition. A little bit about me, I'm Eric Vanderwaal. You can find me at www.gutwellnow.com. That's G-U-T-W-E-L-L-N-O-W.com. We specialize in the treatment of gastrointestinal disorders using traditional Chinese medicine and functional medicine. So come visit us at our website, drop us a line, let us know what you think of our little lectures here. And if you have any questions, we'd be happy to help you with that as well.